Welcome back to Zero Tolerance for today's episode of Learn to Burn with Practical Machinists. Today we're going to talk about fixturing, good ways of burning all kinds of different details and hopefully it will be helpful to you. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is our eight station. We've, we've seen this many times in our videos, but I want to show you what our method to the madness is on these. We've got one, we've got eight stations in here and there's only one that we pick up. So we indicate this one in the morning and all of these other ones we've indicated and we've drawn them into our CAD system so that we know exactly where they're at. So I can program this and then transfer the program to each additional spot and it saves, it saves a lot of time. Um, and you can also organize your tool path with that method as well. In Symmetron, you're allowed to do uh, sorting by roughing tool pass, semi-finish, then finish. So it, instead of it doing everything on the first block, it'll do the first block roughing, second block roughing, or however you want to do it. But that's one of the ways to reduce, reduce the amount of tool changes when you're doing machining. Um, some people don't like to do that, but that's one of the methods that you can do when you have a setup like this. What I'm going to talk about is this. 90 degree adapter that we use all the time and this is our Aroa setup but we typically will put the 90 in here we know exactly where this is in our CAD and we know what what this relationship is and what we do is we tighten this down clock that in so that's locked in and then this specific trode we had to go in with a really tiny cutter and get some sharp edges in there. So that what we did is we mounted it like this so that we could get it in there and machine. You can machine all four sides by rotating it like this. And this allows us to use really sharp or real sharp cutters to clean out those, those small features. And this is a really useful tool. We, we do this all the time. Um, saves time, saves money. Just to add to this, just to add to this uh, method, where you, th this, I just want to show you how modular it is, so you can use it. So, we we got done with that. We flip it over. We can do the same thing on the other side, or we can do the 90, 90 degree, or or the other side. So you can hit five sides um, with a three axis machine um, fairly quick and and easy. I just want to show you an example of an electrode that we really had to use this, this setup for and it's very unique. It's, it's a vector burn um, going in on a 30 degree angle and the only way to do it was to machine this from two different sides and also the top. So it's three sides that we had to machine to do that and like I showed you before this is how we did it. And we machined it this way, we machined it that way and then we also machined it this way. So. This roughed it out, and then we did the finished cuts like this and like this. And that allowed us to get that kind of vector burn electrode made. Right now we're going to talk about um, one of the ways that we utilize the side cuts on a 90 degree holder like we're showing on our, our three axis machine. Um, you can see it when we're designing the electrode, the, the electrode typically um, it typically comes in like straight. So you have, let's say you, you pull the, you're designing your electrode, it comes in like that. We need it rotated on an angle. And the reason that we wanted it rotated on the angle is so that we can cut it correctly like I showed in the, in the machine earlier. Um, so let's cancel that. We're gonna rotate it at 85 degrees and that's how we're able to get a very good cut on this electrode and this is just how we designed it we had to rotate it that 85 degrees so that then when we rotate it 90 out there it's it's actually good so if you look at this screen over here you kind of see our setup in the CAD and this is how uh, we're able to use that 90 degree head 90 degree heads not drawn in just so you can see what I'm talking about it's also versatile you can put it on any of the stations and you can rotate it any of the ways you want so you could go 90 out this way in X, or you go 90 in Y. But this allows us to um, machine different sizes and lengths of electrodes. So that's just an example of what 
I was showing you out there on the machine and, and we'll see the, you'll see this burning here in just a minute. I want to show a couple of older versions of EDM tooling that's out there still today. And this is a 20 millimeter setup. It was, it was very popular when it first came out. It's a hydraulic cylinder that holds this 20 millimeter pin and you, you clock it with the pin here and you tighten it like that and then it's, it's in there. It hydraulically holds the electrode. This system was really popular when it first came out just because it was repeatable and you could mount a lot of electrodes um, and, and do a lot of work with it. One other thing is that a lot of people that had these older systems had machines that had this chuck mounted in it and they started to move towards a different system. Whether it was 3R or ROA, this particular one has an adapter for an ROA style and this is how they would, they would get around um, upgrading their machine chuck as they would mount an ROA chuck to it this way. And this, this solves another problem for shops that really don't have a budget to make a big change in their tooling. Let's talk about the reason that we're seeing a lot of people change to this style, both in Aroa and 3R, is it's a slotted holder. You can put lots of different sizes lengthwise and a lot of different sizes that way as well, um, under an inch and bigger if you just T-slot the trode itself. But what we're seeing is a lot of companies used to do a lot of grinding on blanks. They would get a big chunk and saw cut it up and then grind it square and use that as um, in a V-block to be precise and not waste carbon. But today it's about speed and if you can use a saw cut block, put it in your holder and get going on a system that can be super repeatable, it is a huge advantage for time and, and cost. So we're seeing a lot of people change over to this system just, just for those two reasons. In addition to this 90 degree head that we were showing earlier, um, there's also extensions that are used quite often to reach an area that's really hard. You don't want to have a really long electrode, so we want to keep that electrode as short as we can. So we'll use an extension. And these can get pretty, pretty long and uh, a little obnoxious at times, but they do the, they do the job, they do good um, reaching down. Sometimes we've even had to go in with a 90 and an extension for some specific reason, which we have an example of that, which we'll show you in just a minute. Um, but this works really well for also cutting electrodes, but keeping everything as short as you can, as you know, like short cutters, short trodes, uh, allows for more accuracy um, and, and a, better, a better chance of hitting the numbers that you're shooting for. But this is a, a great example of a useful tool, extensions in 90s, to get the hard to reach places. We'll talk about some very commonly used electrodes in the mold world. Um, one is a subgate, a subgate holder or electrode and sometimes you have to have an angle that's not common. Um, we've built a common based electrode holder, um, custom for us, uh, 45 degrees, 50, 40 degrees, and 35. So we got one, we got like four options in one holder. So this is real common. We try to design around this so that we can do, uh, do the tool, the subgates in the tool changer and not have to manually switch them in and out. Because like this one, I only have one of these holders so as the electrode wears, I'd have to manually change this with a little set screw, which isn't a big deal, but it's room for error. Um, and I recommend having a fixture that you can load them all up and be, and be done with it hands off. Um, just reduces the amount of error. So one of the things that you do with a, with a subgate electrode like this, if you really don't have a good way of referencing it, like we don't on this, a lot of people will use what we call a tooling ball. And I'm just going to lock it in this holder now, but what you can do is you touch the top of the ball left and right to find exactly where that, that point is on the, on the subgate. And then you can actually 
uh, reference your block, um, however you're setting it up. If you're working off an edge or if you're edge finding both ways, um, the tooling ball makes sense when you're doing uh, burns like that. The classic V-block setup that I used forever. We still do use ground blanks, but very few, and this is one of the applications for that. Um, we do buy ground blanks for cutting our electrodes for the subgates, but we also do our undercut or sprue pullers, uh, which we call, um, they're kind of like a negative backdrafted uh, shape like that, so you can see it. Usually we do this on a, on a surface grinder, um, or you can see and see it, but typically it's done on a surface grinder, it's pretty quick. But this is a, another great useful tool when something has to be done a certain way, you got a job from somewhere else, you don't have a way of referencing it, you can, you can always go back to this style, it does work. Um, it's not as efficient as a, as a probe, but it does work and people do it all the time. But I do want to cover that because that's a, a classic way of doing uh, a burn. When you have really intricate jobs, especially tiny ones, there's not really tooling or fixturing out there to help you that's right off the shelf. So, you gotta get a little creative and innovative. Sometimes, you gotta make your own. Like what we have here, is extremely mini V-blocks. You can barely see the V in there, but for a good comparison, we can hold on to 17 thousandths gauge pin. This fixture, of course, in order to get the accuracy and straightness, parallelism, everything on here at such a small level, was actually done on a Mitsubishi MVR uh, 2400 YRDM machine. One of the more advanced machines in the world. And with an accuracy on this level, pretty much no fixturing is a problem. It's another style of fixturing that we've done here at the shop. Um, that allows us to put horn pin holes in on different angles. So this particular fixture is a 15 degree, this one's 20 degree, and this one's a 25. These are the most common, most three angled horn pins that we put into slides for our molds. Um, and we use this uh, 3R style fixture. And then we, we actually screw this in, and this, this whole angle is known so we can dial it in as a datum, and that's, that's in our CAD. And then I literally, we pick up the hole right here, and we set the Z at this point. And then we can put um, our features into the block, like so. So we're picking up here. We know where it is. This is all drawn in CAD, typically. And then this, this particular job needs a horn pin hole that comes in on the 15 degree angle, which is in a three axis machine. This is a great fixture. And this can also go in the EDM um, to burn features in as well. So this is another style of fixture system that works really well. Obviously we're gonna screw this in when we use it, but it works for all three of these common angles. And you could build more or different ones. This was before we had a five axis machine. So this is a, a great way to get started um, on a budget if you need to do something that's repeatable, quick, and utilizes uh, the quick fixturing like the 3R and the Aurora. Here's a, a particular job that we're doing right now, and we've mounted that pallet to a block of steel to our workpiece, and we machined all the bottom, and now this will end up going on what we call a bookshelf, which you can do all five sides in one setup. Um, so you can set it up here, machine the whole top profile. You can see it, set it right here, do, the, do a, a water line or a, a hole through the side on, on every side like this. And this system is super repeatable, so you can, you can hit really accurate numbers with this setup. And we use it a lot. As you can see, this is what these parts end up looking like. Um, we not only use it in the mill, but we also stick them in the wire EDM, and we also stick them in the sinker EDM. Just for an example, this, this one has gone through the mill, 
and now it already went through one way on the on the wire EDM and we're ending up right now they're, they're in the machine now we're gonna flip it this way and we're gonna wire a profile this direction as well and then when we're done with that these blocks will then go into the sinker and it's a huge time saver Another thing to consider too is a lot of people are worried about using too much stock. Uh, it's a waste of time to mount everything on a, on a pallet. Um, in, in some ways, maybe you're right. For time though, you're gonna save a lot of time because at this point, this is pretty much a done part. It went through the five axis, went to heat treat, what came back was finished on the five axis. We fast hold the wire through here and then we wired that precision hole through there. And then we're gonna stick it back in the wire machine and we're gonna wire this off. And then this part will be done minus a little bit of grinding. So to have all those done in one setup is, is impressive. And then to be able to duplicate that across multiple parts, this particular job has multiple cavities. So you can't beat that when it comes to time and efficiency and accuracy. wire machine to make a very custom pin lifter for um, a production mold. It's a hardened H13 pin I believe and we had to put this this feature on here and the best way to do it was to use the wire machine and the best way to hold them because there's I think we have to make eight of them is to use the collet just like this. After using the sunspot holders for a while, I've, I've been using them for like nine years, and I've come to trust that they, they come in good and they work good in my machine, in the mill, and the, and the uh, EDM sinker. So we've had real good luck with them, and um, it allowed me to, to grow my business doing it that way, trying to be cost effective and smart about it. EDM tooling is, is a necessary part of the shop today, whether, whether you're doing pieces, electrodes, whatever it is, it's more efficient, it's better, uh, and it'll help your company. Thanks for watching this episode. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Join us next month for another episode. Remember to subscribe and like, and we'll see you then. Today we're going to talk about the big fan that just turned on behind me. <laughs> Alright, we're going to talk about the I just did all right, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Why do you look so confused? I am. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for Zero Tolerance Learn to Burn episode number number. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for an exciting adventure. <laughs> Comment. I can't remember. I just can't remember.